I remember just running around thinking, how does all of this amazing natural beauty exist in the same world that cancer exists? So I moved to Dubai in 2011 with my husband in the hopes of this dream life that Dubai offers and it didn't turn out as I planned. Um, my husband travelled a lot with work, I hated my job and I really missed my family more than I ever thought that I would. And it came to my days off, I would just sleep the day away. Um, apart from speaking to my mum on Skype to, to tell her how miserable I was, um, there was not really a lot of good going on in my life and I started to realise that things were not really heading in a good direction for me. I was too stubborn to move back home, I really didn't want to go back with my tail between my legs, I just had to make this dream life happen. So we started to make some changes, I moved house, I changed jobs and I joined a gym. And at the gym, I used to do this class which started off with a one kilometer warm up on the treadmill. And that was the workout for me. Um, running for seven minutes on the treadmill, I was finished. And I've never really been into fitness before. All of that changed in 2013 when I received a phone call from my mom to tell me that my younger brother, who was 22 at the time, Ryan, he had had a seizure while he was at work and we just kind of thought that it was um, sunstroke to be honest because it was an unusually hot day in England and he was working outside so we didn't really think anything of it um, and she called me to tell me that the CT scans had shown that he had a brain tumour which was a massive shock and I don't think I quite believed it to be honest because he had no symptoms before this. He was 22, um, fit, healthy and it's unbelievable, you know, how, how can you process that? And your first thoughts of a brain tumour are, they're going to die. And that's really hard to process when you're thinking of your little brother, you know. So that evening I went to the gym and I used the treadmill to process all of my thoughts and I ran more than seven minutes um, with every single footstep, like every time my foot hit the treadmill I was just imagining that I was crushing this tumour um, and I just kept thinking, you know, if he needed me and this treadmill was keeping him alive, I'm sure I could run for a lot longer than seven minutes. And I ran for 30 minutes that night, which to me now doesn't seem like a lot, but at the time, you know, it, it was a lot more than I had and it just really helped me to just get my thoughts together and process what I'd just been told. My name is Melanie Wilkinson and I want to share my story with you on how losing my younger brother to cancer has helped me to change my life for the better. And I'm sharing my story in the hopes that other people won't wait for rock bottom to hit or for some kind of tragedy before they make changes to theirs. So growing up, um, me and Ryan have always been so, so close. There's just the two of us and me being a tomboy, we had very similar interests. So we were very, very blessed as kids. We had a caravan and we used to go um, quad biking, jet skiing, motorbiking. Um, we would play football, obviously all the normal outdoorsy kid stuff, but we just had the best childhood. And this is kind of what I thought my life was going to be like, you know, I thought that me and Ryan would grow old, we would have kids, and we, we would let our kids play together, we would have the most amazing family Christmases like we always do. And that's just what I thought my life was going to be like and now that's never going to happen. Um, in 2013, after Ryan had the news that he had a brain tumour, he went straight in for surgery to remove the tumour, which at the time this was a benign tumour. And Ryan being Ryan, four weeks later he was back at work 
like nothing had happened apart from you know the huge scar where his you know skull has been cracked open for surgery he was completely normal and we just thought wow how lucky he is you know um, there's people that aren't as lucky as him and when we really started to look into it we see that there's a lot of funds that that they need for all the different types of brain tumors and the people that aren't as lucky so i started to really ramp up the running it helped me mentally to process everything and it was a great way to do some fundraising so 2017 he came to dubai and he stayed for a whole month and honestly <laughs> we had the best time like we had so much fun he celebrated his 26th birthday here and um, we, we really made some amazing memories. We were actually coming out of the mall one day and he went to do a like a wheelie and he wanted to like jump off the curb <laughs> and he, he like catapulted himself out of the wheelchair. Oh my gosh, it was so funny and you could see passers-by were like Oh my gosh, is this guy okay? While well, we, me, my mum and my husband just stood absolutely like laughing in hysterics. Um, and he thought it was hilarious. Like he's like, oh, that was a bit awkward. Um, but that was just his personality, you know, like he just, anytime something was taken away from him, he like filled it with something new that he could do. So I feel so blessed that we had this one month of really special time together. Um, after Ryan left here, uh, he went back to the UK and he started to have really frequent seizures and this was abnormal. So they took him into hospital, which we again didn't think anything of and I think it's hard now looking back, you realise how sick he really was, but at the time, someone that's just getting on with their life and just making the most of every single day, you, you don't realize how sick they are because they just, it becomes the new normal. I woke up one morning to a message from him saying, I need you home because my tumors have grown. And I thought I'll reply to him later because he's asleep. And I went and ran this amazing half marathon in the most beautiful mountains in Hatta. And I remember just running around thinking, how does all of this amazing natural beauty exist in the same world that cancer exists? And how can all of this have been created by nature and then we can't create a cure for cancer? I just, I just find it really hard to, to understand, you know, how life works, how the world works. And I finished the run, I took a selfie, I sent him a picture and I asked him if he wanted to Skype later on in the day and it was never him that replied after that. It was my mum replying, she kept saying that he was not feeling good and he was exhausted because he'd been sick the whole evening and we thought it was either due to the bad news that his tumours had grown more or the fact that he had the, the dye that you have to take for the, the scan to, to show up. So we just thought again, put it down to nothing, he's just not feeling great, it'll be fine tomorrow. 9pm that evening, um, I received a phone call from my auntie and she just said to me, you need to come home. And I was like, why, you know, like, He's fine, what, why do I need to come home now? I'm, I'm coming home in, you know, in, in a couple weeks time. And she just said, the nurses don't think he's got very long left. And I remember just saying like, what are you on about? What, what do you mean? Like, this doesn't make any sense. He's just tired. He's just a bit sick, like he's fine. Um, why are we overreacting here? You know, I think I was very much in denial. Um, 
And she said, no, Mel, you really need to get home. You need to get on a flight as soon as possible. And in that moment, I, I just collapsed. I just never really thought that that was gonna happen. Um, like, don't get me wrong, I knew he was not gonna live forever. I knew we wasn't gonna have, you know, that dream life that I planned out for us with our kids and all of that, but I thought he had a lot longer. Like, I thought he had years. Um, I was so nervous to turn my phone on when I actually landed uh, in England. And when I turned it on, I called my mom and she said, he's fine. And I was like, oh my God, thank God. Like, he's fine. He's probably done this, like, just to get me home. And we started to drive to the hospital and I kept calling my mom and she kept putting the phone to his ear and I was talking to him down the phone and she said, he keeps raising his eyebrows at you, you know, that was, pretty much all we were getting from him at that moment in time. All of my family were there in the room with him. Um, my mom, my dad, my cousins, my auntie, uncle, my grandma, everyone was surrounding him. And um, I just kept talking to him and saying, you know, I'm gonna be there soon. I'm gonna come and give you a big hug. And um, my auntie met me in the car park of the hospital to show me the way in and I just sprinted ahead. You know, I left her behind, didn't know where I was going, I was frantic, I just needed to see him. And um, I ran into the hospital and I was screaming, where is he, where is he? And I finally ran into his room and he'd gone. I literally missed him by like five minutes. And um, yeah, in that moment, I just, oh, I think I was just on the floor, having an asthma attack. I couldn't believe what was happening, you know? Um, and when we left the hospital that day and, you know, everyone's just going about their normal lives, you know, going to work and walking their dog and, you see all these people just carrying on with their lives and it's just so hard. You know, you, you want the world to stop. You want everyone to, to feel your pain and, and know what's just happened and like, realize like we've just lost someone really special. Every single day after that moment was Groundhog Day and I found it really difficult to start with because I just wanted to see him and I just wanted to speak to him um, and I just didn't see the point in being here like I just missed him so much but in those really sad days you know when again I would be wasting a day just feeling sad and moping around, I thought, how can I waste this day when I'm so blessed to have it? You know, like, he's not here and I have this privilege to be here and to live my life and I need to make the most of it because I'm sure he would, you know, want to be here in a heartbeat if he could. So I just decided to use those dark, sad moments as the motivation to really make the most of things because he never gave up, you know, like he lived every single day to the, to the max and no matter what was thrown his way, he, he just got, he went through it and he showed me how, like he showed me that superhuman strength like I've never seen before. So he is just a massive inspiration to me and why I really have to pick myself up on those days and start living life just like he would if he was still here. So I started off by getting back into my running and doing my fundraising. Um, the challenges got bigger and harder and I started to um, join some running clubs and I made some amazing friends and they were just so inspired by my story and by everything that I was doing and it just fueled me even more. I wanted to do more and I wanted to raise more awareness 
raise more funds. And it just helped me to feel better. Like the training, the daily training, it's really hard going, but it gives you so much focus. And having a goal helped me to get through those really, really hard times. And in between each goal, I found that I was struggling, so I created a new goal. And I just kept chasing these goals and challenges until I found myself crossing the finish line of a 90 kilometer ultra marathon, which took me 11 and a half hours to do. And it's probably one of the hardest things I've ever done. But honestly, when you see your younger brother like face cancer the way that he did and go through all of the things that he did I mean I can't even go through all of the the different procedures and surgeries and things he's had done when you know all of those things and you think wow he just he just got through it it makes you really believe that you can do anything and the more challenges I did the more I believed I could do anything that I put my mind to and it's made me become a lot more adventurous and um, more confident, like fearless, I guess. Like he was fearless and it's really inspired me to live the same way. I really urge anyone who is going through any difficult moments to talk to someone. It doesn't have to be someone professional. It can just be, you know, your family or your friends, but it really does help and it, it just takes a weight off your shoulders. So, you know, life is short and we have to really make the most of it. I like to live every day with gratitude. Like, I feel so grateful and this is one of the biggest healers that I've found, is that being grateful for having my brother for 26 years, rather than being sad and angry that he's been taken away from us early, it definitely changes your perspective and you can really cherish that time and those memories that you have with that person and I feel blessed that he was my brother at all, you know. I, I know I'm lucky that I had him and if it wasn't for him and for everything that he went through, I wouldn't be who I am today. I wouldn't definitely wouldn't be here talking to you today um, and sharing this story. So I think the biggest thing is that you never really know what is around the corner. You never know what life is going to throw your way. And these things are going to come to you and they're totally out of your control. And the only thing that you can control is how you react to them. And something Ryan also showed me, you know, everything that came to him, the way he reacted showed me just, okay, let's look for what is positive. Okay, there's people worse off than me. Okay, but I can still do this. There was always something positive to see in the dark situations. And just like losing Ryan, there's a silver lining to all of this because, you know, he's changed my life. I just hope that you also will feel inspired by him and you'll make changes in your life now. You know, there's always something that you can change like we all have this amazing power inside of us to make ourselves happy and until we are happy on the inside nothing in that outside world will change and you just have to do it now like don't wait for those depressive rock bottom moments don't wait for a tragedy or a death or the job loss or whatever it is just do it now, like make small changes now and start to live the life that you've always dreamed of because it's possible and Ryan has showed me how and the most amazing thing that he always showed me is to smile, he always smiled, every selfie from every hospital bed was always a smile and that's the biggest thing. Just smile and be happy and be positive and be grateful and just live the way that Ryan has showed us that is possible to do.
Thank you so much for listening to my story and I really hope that Ryan can help to inspire you as much as he has me. Tell us what you think about this video and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.